fact. If you want to master supplements, it is not just about doing the right things, it's also about avoiding the wrong things. Okay, so as I was getting some work done today, I had some thoughts that have been occurring to me. So while I continue to get work done, here I am recording a quick video. So if I'm like looking around a little bit, <laughs> you'll know that I'm just taking care of stuff in the background while I talk about this, but it's really important. So I wanted to go ahead and share my thoughts on this with you today. So I'm gonna be debunking a few months that I've seen professional colleagues make over and over again. I see my colleagues clinging to these myths and it prevents them from getting the consistent client success that is possible if you've truly mastered supplements. Now, if I share them with you, haha, you can avoid them. Yay! Hence why I'm making this video. Here are the three most common myths that occurred to me while I was taking care of my work stuff today. And these are the myths that I consistently see colleagues falling for and some thoughts on how you can avoid them and do better by knowing better, right? So myth number one, all supplements are pretty much the same when it comes to quality and how well they work. Now, as a supplement expert, I completely understand why so many consumers and practitioners think that this myth is true. And to be fair, it is partially true. And that's because the sad truth is that only about 15% of supplements on the market are actually worth taking. And huge shocker, there's even fewer high quality fatty acid supplements. Five to 10% of the fatty acid supplements on the market are actually worth taking. Okay, now here's the truth, right? So now you can know better, do better. High quality, effective supplements are the rarity, not the norm. And this is the real reason why most products don't work or why people have a bad reaction to supplements, right? Now in the 15 week FSS program, you're going to be able to identify the quality from the crap in less than one month just by looking at a supplement label. Myth number two, when it comes to supplements, a lot of my professional colleagues have the extreme misunderstanding that practitioner lines are always going to be good, better, or higher quality. Well, remember how in myth number one, I mentioned that only 15% of supplements are worth taking? Yeah, well, spoiler alert, the same is true of practitioner lines. In fact, some over-the-counter lines are better than many practitioner lines. Now here is the truth. Specialty lines are the key to identifying what are likely higher quality and more effective products, right? So there's a little takeaway pearl for you. For example, finding a company that only makes herb products using organic herbs or a, an, a supplement company that specializes in enzymes or amino acids, things like that. So think specialty companies. Going for specialty companies means that you are much more likely to be getting a higher quality product because they're specializing in a specific category. Well, here's the truth. Most practitioner lines don't specialize. If you enroll in the FSS program, by week two, you can actually begin to create something that I call a supplement shortlist using the super simple two-step quality check that I created. So you can start compiling your shortlist of the brands that actually meet your quality standards as a health practitioner. Okay, let's move into myth number three. Maybe you think you already know enough about supplements. Well, if that's you, my question is, how did you learn about supplements? Usually, most health practitioners, there's one of three ways that they've learned about supplements that makes them think that they already know about supplements. So let's talk about number one, through training provided or sponsored by supplement companies, by crowdsourcing free groups, or maybe they've done a lot of online research. Okay. Here's the truth, starting with training provided or sponsored by supplement companies. Now, 
Information provided or sponsored by supplement companies is going to be biased because all supplement companies have an agenda. Their agenda is they want to make their company and their products sound like the coolest thing since ice cream because they're profit-based and profit-driven companies. Their goal is to sell, sell, sell. This means that all the training that is provided or sponsored by supplement companies requires a foundational understanding of what actually makes a high-quality and effective supplement to accurately discern if what you're learning from a supplement company is trustworthy. And just a reminder, 85% are not worth taking. Now for the truth about crowdsourcing free groups. I know how many health practitioners regularly crowdsource supplement information in free groups, for example, product suggestions in Facebook groups or online, and I don't want to make anyone feel bad, but I also know we can only do better if we know better, and therefore I'm going to keep it real with you to start. There are a lot of considerations to factor in, which the majority of health practitioners aren't even aware of. So if that's you, that's okay. You're going to learn better now. For example, does the individual who is making a supplement recommendation know how to identify the most effective nutrient forms? Probably not. Do they understand the quality and category considerations for the product that they're suggesting? If you don't understand what I mean by category considerations, that is like, that is a whole, whole big topic of conversation. I dedicate two whole weeks to talking about category considerations in the 15-week FSS program. So there are different supplement categories, like um, there's water-soluble vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, fatty acids, um, there's the herbs, amino acids, minerals, homeopathics, protein powders, every single one of those supplement categories has specific considerations regarding how those products should optimally be made, manufactured, optimal nutrient forms. And if all the bases aren't covered for each one of those individual categories, which all require completely different things, then you're going to be getting a lower quality, less effective product, right? So if you're not aware, or if the person suggesting a product is not aware of the category considerations for the product that they're suggesting, is it really trustworthy? Do you really know that that's going to be a high quality, effective product? And last but not least, does the person making the product suggestion know whether or not the product is safe for people